Semper Paratus, class of 2020, you're almost there. This is General Mark Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Congratulations on your graduation from the United States Coast Guard Academy. You are indeed always ready, as your motto says. When you first entered the Academy, you were swabs, just entering the profession of arms. You came from all over the nation and all over the world, from different backgrounds and cultures. I'm sure that when your boots first hit the deck, when your muscles ached during sea trials, and when your intellect was stretched late into the night in Saddley and McAllister or Yeaton Hall, you thought to yourself, what am I doing here? What does this profession mean to me? What does this profession mean to the country? Throughout your time at the Academy, I'm sure that each and every single one of you came to the same conclusion. And I'm sure of that because you're here. You're here on graduation day. You committed to something bigger than yourself. You endured these last four years of pushing yourself physically and mentally to be part of the fabric that holds this nation together. You have realized that it's not just about you anymore. It's about the classmates beside you, your family behind you, the Coast Guardsmen that you will lead. But leading men and women is not just about competence and expertise. It's actually much more than the hard skills you picked up in the classroom. It's all about character. It's about those words printed in stone on the quarterdeck of Chase Hall, honor, respect, devotion to duty. These words can't be abstract for you. You need to understand for yourself what it means to be a servant leader, to be selfless, to have integrity, to be respectful, to live up to your core values of honor and duty. In our profession, you must develop a bond of trust like no other occupation in the world. You have to trust each other. You have to trust the chain of command. You have to trust the petty officers and the seamen, and they must trust you. And you have to earn that trust. You can't walk out of a forward operating base in Afghanistan unless you trust that everybody walking out with you has your back and knows what they're doing. You don't fly into a hurricane when no one else will to pull survivors from the rooftops or board a drug cartel's semi-submersible without that trust. That bond of trust is not just to keep you and your teammates alive, but in fact to keep the country alive. You see, the American people, they trust us. They trust those of us in uniform to defend them. And we, in turn, trust each other to accomplish the mission in the toughest of conditions. As you leave your homes for your first duty assignment and begin your journey, you will serve your country during a time of incredible challenge and increased complexity around the world. The world around us is becoming increasingly unpredictable and under increased strain. Seventy-five years ago, at the end of World War II, the bloodiest war in human history, people throughout the world said never again. So they set up processes and policies and laws and organizations such as NATO and the United Nations. This international order was designed to do one thing, to prevent World War III, to prevent another great power war. Today, we talk about terms like great power competition and great power war in conversations in classrooms so easily, but not so for the greatest generation. In the short period of 31 years, from 1914 to 1945, World Wars I and II were fought among the great powers of the day and 150 million people around the world were slaughtered in the conduct of war. I had an opportunity in June last year to go to the 75th anniversary of the Normandy landings. I was talking to several of the veterans and I leaned over to one of them who was in a wheelchair. And I said to him simply, what is your lesson from World War II? He looked up at me and tears came to his eyes and he said, General, Never let it happen again. Never let it happen again. So this is where you come in, the class of 2020. It is our task to ensure that the peace is maintained. And that is only done through our military strength and readiness. We are now in the 75th year of the international order bestowed upon you and me. And that order is under assault. 
is being challenged. Reflect for a moment on what you have seen while you were here at the Academy. An aggressive Russia intervening in Syria and other parts of Eastern Europe. An assertive China militarizing the South China Sea. Continued tensions on the Korean Peninsula. Malign behavior from Iran and its terrorist proxies. All of this and much more has happened in just your four years here at the Academy. And now it's become ever more complicated with the introduction of the Corona-19 virus. So what does this mean to you as you report to your first duty station? So the Coast Guard is uniquely situated to respond. You are both a military service and a law enforcement organization. Diplomacy is your weapon. The Coast Guard operates with over 60 countries all over the world. Building partnerships and sustaining trust with allies allows you access to contested regions in a manner that is not viewed as escalatory. You are able to advance U.S. national security interests by working with partner nations in the Indo-Pacific, shaping international norms with, within the Arctic Council, and supporting combatant commanders through theater security cooperation missions in Africa, in the Middle East, and in Europe. The Coast Guard has the rare ability to work with our allies to build up governance structures in our global commons, the high seas, to reestablish and re-cement the international order our parents and our grandparents worked so hard to construct. By modeling internationally recognized maritime behaviors and norms, you help prevent escalation. You help prevent great power war. Since your founding in 1790, the Coast Guard has been there for every major war involving the United States and will always be there with your sister services. And today, you're going to join that long blue line. And you're about to take an oath, an oath of allegiance. And in that oath, you're going to swear that you are willing to suffer serious harm or death in the cause of freedom. You're going to swear to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. You know, there's 196 countries in the world and all of their militaries of all of those militaries, of all of those countries, we, the United States military, are the only one that swears an oath not to a person or a government or a king or a queen, not to a tribe or a political party. No, we swear an oath to an idea, and it's a powerful idea. It's an idea that has brought down tyrannies and dictators. It's an idea that Coast Guardsman Medal of Honor recipient Douglas Munro gave his life to protect as he rescued United States Marines on Guadalcanal. It is the same idea that Nate Bruckenthal paid the ultimate sacrifice for while intercepting a suicide bomber attack in 2004 off the coast of Iraq. It's an idea Coast Guardsmen like you throughout the last two centuries have given their lives to protect, and it's a simple idea like all powerful ideas really are. So what is this idea? What is this idea that is embedded in this document that we call the United States Constitution? It's simple. It's an idea that says that you and I, no matter who you are, whether you're male or you're female, no matter if you're Catholic or Protestant, Muslim or Jew, doesn't matter what your religion is or if you choose not to believe at all. It doesn't matter if you're black or you're white, Asian or Indian. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter how you identify. It doesn't matter where you came from or what your country of origin is. It doesn't matter what your last name is. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor or famous or common. In this country, in these United States, under these colors of red, white, and blue, every one of us, every single one of us, are all born free and equal. And we will rise or fall based on our knowledge, our skills, and our attributes. We're going to be judged by the content of our character. Nothing else matters. That is all it is. And that is the organizing principle of this great country called the United States of America. And that is what you are taking an oath to defend, and that is what you are willing to die for. That is what you inherited from those that came before you, and that is what you're going to pass on safely to the next generation. So God bless every single one of you. We're proud of you, and congratulations to the class of 2020. Semper Paratus.